Hello everyone, this is Kyle Lacroix with Sets Consulting, and today is episode two of my Sets stories. If you missed episode one, uh, go back on my profile. Uh, it should be in there. It's a pretty entertaining story. But today's episode two, we will call this Motivation from Unexpected Places. So it was 2004, I just graduated from college and I had turned down uh, three really impressive job offers. Uh, people would jump at the opportunity to work at some of these places and I turned all of them down. And of course, everyone thought I was, I was crazy. Uh, but I, I just, I had a bigger vision and I was looking at this club in South Florida um, and it wasn't even built yet, but I just, I knew what it could be and I had a vision for it. So after college, I, I moved back home to Florida with my parents, uh, which I didn't feel so great about that, but you know, they're my parents, so they kind of had to take me in. Um, but you know, my parents aren't tennis people and they didn't understand why it was taking me so long to get a job. Uh, they thought it was like McDonald's, you know, you walk in, fill out an application and you should get hired right there on the spot. And as I found out, it, it, it doesn't quite work like that. Um, so I was living with them for a couple of weeks and their frustrations grew and, and so did mine. And we kind of had it out. And I did something that uh, I don't recommend anyone doing. Uh, I, I lied to my parents. Uh, I told them I got the job in Boca Raton at this club, uh, which I did not. Um, I didn't know anyone in Boca Raton, uh, didn't have any money, but uh, I'm a stubborn one sometimes. And so uh, I, took, uh, I took my car and all my belongings. I, I, I packed it up and I drove down to Boca Raton, Florida. And I lived in a Walmart parking lot for about three weeks. And during this time when I was waiting for this job in, in Boca to, to open up or for them to call me to give me some, some sign, um, I was just uh, spending all day long in my car. Um, and uh, it, was, it was pretty, pretty tough, I have to say. It was definitely the, the lowest point of my life. Uh, here I was, college graduate, and had all these expectations placed on me because of how well I did. Uh, early on and and um, I just I just didn't feel like I was living up to, to any of those expectations set by other people or myself for that matter and so um, there I was you know in the parking lot just day after day hour after hour but during that time I get a call from a buddy of mine and he told me that there was a prominent coach that was opening up an academy nearby and he said, hey, here's his phone number. Please give him a call. See if maybe there's an opportunity there. And I thought it was an amazing opportunity. Uh, I've known about this coach for years. I followed him um, in terms of his, his career and the players he's coached. And uh, great track record in terms of the players that he's developed. Incredible knowledge for the game. And it just so happened that the timing was perfect. He was just starting to open up his academy about 25 minutes away from me. And I thought, wow, what an opportunity it would be to, to learn from this coach. So I get his number and I, I muster up the courage to call him. And I called him at like 12 o'clock on a Thursday afternoon. And I, I called him and probably interrupted his lunch because I could hear him chewing on the other end of the phone. And, you know, he answers, says hello. And I say, oh, hi, Mr. So-and-so. I'm not going to say his name out of, out of uh, privacy and respect to him. But uh, I introduce myself and I tell him about, about my, my life and where I'm from and what I want to do and, and all of my experience. And... Um, there's silence on the other end. And then he asked me again what my name is. And I told him. And he asked my world ranking, which I thought was a bit odd, but okay. And so I, 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 I told him that and I, I was honest with him. I said, you know, I played in college, but I, I never 
I never had a, a, a world ranking. I, I never really went on tour or anything like that, but I had the experience and I, I, I know I'm a, I'm a good level. Um, and I told him, I will do anything. I will do court maintenance for you. Um, I will, I will clean all the bathrooms. I don't care. I just want an opportunity to work for you, to work under you, just to learn from you. And there was more silence on his end. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't like to beg, but I, I, I was really, I, I couldn't live in my car anymore. And I was just looking for any opportunity. I didn't even care if it was on court. Um, you know, just something where I could say that I have a job. And he thought about it for a moment and asked me again what my name was, who I was. And so I told him again and went through the whole story. And he said, I don't know. I don't think you'll be good enough. I don't think you'll ever be good enough. And so if you tell me that I can't do something or I won't be good enough, guess what's going to happen? Yes. So I'm, I'm one of those people. So uh, after that, he, he, he hung up. He said, thanks anyways. Have a nice day. And then click. And I was like, wow wow that's unbelievable i'm in i'm in i'm in deep trouble right now and this guy was like my my last lifeline um so from that moment from that phone call it just it just woke up something inside of me and uh and moving forward uh, I, I got the job a few weeks later in boca raton at this club that i was looking at and uh fast forward a little bit more it's been 16 years later. I'm still at that club. It's thriving. Everything is great. Uh, and I'm just, I'm, I'm so excited that it all worked out in the end. But I've busted my hump for the last 16 years, not only at this club, but in the industry, thanks to this guy and what he said and said that I would never be good enough. Now, what's ironic is that 10 years to the day that I had this phone call with this prominent coach 10 years to the day i am in new york city during the u.s open and i get recognized by the uspta i receive a, a national award 10 years to the day that this man said that i would not be good enough and that i would never be good enough now what he meant by never be good enough i don't know what he meant by that whether it was my my, my playing background my professional background I'm not sure, but I took it to mean everything. So I really took it to heart. And for those 10 years, I, I worked my tail off to get to that point. Uh, I got recognized uh, that evening in New York City by the USPTA, which was fantastic. And coincidentally, he actually also received an award. He wasn't there because apparently he was at the US Open coaching a player. Uh, but I just thought, wow, it's a... Uh, Tennis comes full circle. So um, anyways, hope you enjoyed that story. I know it probably wasn't as funny as, as the, the, the previous one from, from episode one, but um, that's my story on, on, on motivation and kind of what, what drove me and what still drives me. And, you know, tennis is a small world, and I have a lot of friends that are friends with him, and he doesn't know, and I, I've never told him this, and I probably never will. And hopefully, if, if you find out who I'm talking about, you, we'll keep this secret between us. But uh, it's something that's always, always driven me. And, um, you know, you can look back and, and be upset by him or, or, or be bitter and angry, but I'm really not. I, I'm extremely appreciative. And uh, thank goodness he said that I would never be good enough because, uh, well, Maybe I am. I'm not really the judge of that. Maybe you guys can, can, can judge for me. But I think considering his words, I've done pretty well. So anyways, that's my time. Thank you so much for listening. And see you next time. Bye.